Hello, welcome back to the channel. This is the Dad Delivers vlog where we try something new every day and today I'm trying this. It doesn't look like it yet, but I'm trying to build an L-shaped bench, a booze, I don't know what you call it, a bonquette, some kind of L-shape dining table bench thing. I think this video is going to be more of a talky, talky vlog. I've been doing a lot of how-to videos lately and this is going to be uh, a bit more vloggy. I started this, this is what it looks like at the moment. The frame of the first part of the L, the L of the L shape is going okay, but I didn't know it would end up this way. So that's why I didn't film it because I was kind of working it out as I went along. That you can see my, this is my, <laughs> these are my calculations here. And I, I know that the bench bit that you sit on is gonna be 40 centimeters wide. So everything else has been based on working backwards from that. And that's what this pad is trying to show. It looks like a, a bit of extreme woodwork, but actually it's some extreme mathematics. I've just been doing like four hours of maths, trying to work back from, <laughs> from having a top of 40 centimeters all the way back to the wall. Obviously the walls aren't straight. And then I had to, I forgot about the skirting board, so I had to factor a, the gap from the wall caused by the skirting board. But this is the shape that I'm going for. It's kind of a box construction, and I'm using stud work. I'm using this wooden stud work that I've got from, from Wix. Didn't buy enough. <laughs> so we've just been to, to Wix this morning to, to buy some more struts there. I don't know if I can explain this. You'll see it from the, the footage here. I've got two trays, one at the top and one at the bottom. They're connected by these four legs. So the legs take the load, but the load is kind of spread across the two trays at the top. And I'm at a crucial point in the construction here, as you can see. Oh, you can move it around. I guess I should nail it and screw it to the wall, but the walls aren't straight. So I want to get the top on first before I work out what to do with that. But I like the, the idea that there's going to be storage under here. And I'll show you what I'm thinking there as I go. But obviously the next the next thing I've got to do is the, the other part of the L. If I move the table back like this, I've got our old Ikea bench. By the way, there's a video about how to put up one of these Ikea benches. It's on screen now and in the description. If I move this to where the other bit of bench is going to go, it's gonna kind of look like this. And it's gonna run up to as far as the shelf, the windowsill there. So I've now got to build another box and that means that I can do that on camera and uh, we'll do it as a speed build. <laughs> you can live vicariously through my furniture carpentry. I bought a tool, I don't know if I'm going to use it, but I've been using the jigsaw, whoa, like this. I've been using a jigsaw to cut all of the pieces and thankfully I've managed to guide it fairly straight but it's not really straight and it is difficult to to make the bench true even with the wonky walls and wonky floor so i've got this i might give this a try this is a compound mitre saw uh, it might take me longer to put it up than it would to just saw it the rest of it by jigsaw should we do an unboxing let's do an unbox let's do a quick unboxing so this is the compound mitre saw if you've not used one before it basically saws in dead straight lines you can get them from amazon i'll put a link down in the description by the way this is the hottest day of the year it isn't just like the hottest day of the year it's the hottest day since records began so it's a bit of a national emergency that i'm uh, doing this heavy duty diy in but i have no idea how to put this together Enough talk, let's put it to the test. I'm gonna cut the next beam, the next bit of stud work to go onto the L-shaped bench. I don't know why I make these videos. I think it's to, uh, to somehow uh, find meaning in my life. <laughs> Friend would show me this. If I rub a candle, or in this case, a tea light along the blade, the, the wax melts as it goes through the wood and it helps it to glide across and uh, brings the friction down makes it slightly easier to saw. There, so it's, it's, that's great. It cuts it really straight, but it takes a lot longer than the jigsaw. That 
is so much quicker. <laughs> I don't think you can see it on camera, but it's, that's good enough. That looks straight, feels straight. Next, I need to cut the pieces of wood that go between these to turn it into a tray. I'll go back now to using the mitre saw. I'd like to say it's so that the middle bits have to be dead accurate, but actually it's probably because I just don't want to feel like I've wasted my money and a trip to the, <laughs> to the store to get the mitre saw. Now I get to cut the legs. Should we go for a different angle? Now, cut all the wood. It's time to screw it all together and try and do that in a way that's really straight. I've got my own little weird system going here, but it works for me, where I'm gonna put the trays together by pushing them against the wall and pushing them into the corner of the wall to use that as, even though the walls aren't especially straight, but at least I've got something straight and true to push against when I'm screwing the battens, these studs together. I'm pre-drilling holes just to make the screwing easier and I'm using deck screws. They are just the right length, but they're probably just a couple of millimeters too long. So they are just protruding on the inside, but hopefully we won't see that and uh, you won't even feel it either, but it's, it's the exact amount. I really am on the edge of the width of the wood here. But this is me just drilling pilot holes and I think I like this part of the process the, the most. On the first bench of the L shape, I did actually have a, a panel on the end there, but I've decided to put the, the short bits in the middle at the ends there. It looks tidier, but it, no one's gonna see any of this anyway because it's gonna be covered by the seats. Great, now that I have these two trays, I'm calling them trays, next I'm gonna put on the four legs that will connect them together. I've got the Tour de France going on in the background just to keep me sane while I'm doing this. It's the final, final week of the Tour de France. done it all four legs are now on and it feels really sturdy so I'm really super pleased about that so next I'm gonna screw them to the other tray I don't know what you'd call it the other support will go on the legs I'll do that now as a quick time lapse It works, it works. I've just got two more screws to put in. Let's give you a close up on the final screw to go in. Okay. Uh, deck screw, just put it in here. He's done. So now, we turn it into an L-shaped bench. Yes, it's an L-shape. But we need, we need an L-shaped seat to go on this so we can actually sit on this frame and not fall through the middle. So I went with my son to the DIY Superstore and we found the perfect furniture board. It's like this, pine furniture board, but obviously it's not the right size. So we use their cutting service. I haven't got very good footage of it. Um, it didn't feel right to film it. <laughs> but I still wanted to show you us actually getting the board, but we got the furniture board cut to size. I am now about to find out if my measurements are correct. I've had to allow for this, this massive gap here and still have an overhang so it doesn't 
feel too flush, you know, it feels like a seat. I've got one long bit and one short bit, and even though this is the long bit and that's the short bit, I'm gonna put the long bit down the, the window side of the wall. I, it just felt more right doing it that way. Oh, here we go, so I'll lay down the, the long board on this side. I'll make it flush with the wall. This shorter one can go like this. Oh, it works. You can sit on it. We've got an L-shaped bench. <laughs> it's done, I've done it. That is the L-shaped bench that I've been dreaming about for about 14 months. I've got to do some other, other things like probably screw the two parts together so that we've got you know a continuous L shape that sticks and doesn't move around and I'm gonna get some side panels I don't know what to get maybe plywood to fill these middles and I want to put magnetic catches on here to use this as storage underneath but I am really happy with that also I want to cut out I'm gonna route route I'm just gonna drill some holes and turn it into like a hand grip in the middle there and the middle of that one so that you can lift them up easily to get to the storage but oh my goodness that is beyond my wildest dreams i'm so happy with that just trying to shoot it from all angles but there are only so many angles that i can shoot it from let's up the music give you some close-up shots the other thing we'll do is we'll probably we my amazing unstoppable wife will probably make some kind of padded cushion for that. I don't know how you do that L shape. I suppose you just do it with, with two parts again. Well, welcome back to part two of my L shaped bench project. Because as you can see, I've got the sides not covered up. So if we were to use it for storage, everything would sort of fall out the edges. So today, this morning, I went to my favorite place on earth, not really, somewhere that I seem to be going a lot. It was another DIY superstore. This one happened to be B&Q. And I wanted to find some plywood. I thought if I got some thick plywood, I could use that to put the sides on. It's one of these. And I think I found my perfect piece of wood, but as you can see, it is absolutely massive. I couldn't get that into the car, even if I tried. And I decided to use their cutting service. So I planned it all out. I've got all my dimensions on my bit of paper, but first I had to get the right piece of wood. Now I saw lots of reviews online saying this wood falls apart, it's warped, but actually I thought it looked great. I just knew that the top two sheets were warped. They looked really bent. So I had to get a sheet from underneath. I think on the footage here, you can see me getting the sheet that's three sheets down. That looks fairly new. But the only way I could get it out was by doing that magic trick. You know where they pull the tablecloth off the table and leave everything standing? Well, I thought if I whipped out this giant sheet of plywood fast enough, I'd be, be able to get it out. But I think the footage shows quite clearly that that wasn't the best plan. But still, I tried. I kept pulling, tugging. Finally, after a lot of jimmying and walking around this, this truck that was left in front of it, I gave it one last push, managed to get it out. So now I can get it over to the cutting service area. Okay, I've got the wood, time to get it cut now. Just over here. And this is the cutting area. I don't like filming people when they're at work. Uh, it's bad enough when I do it on myself, <laughs> let alone dragging other people into it. But I just wanted to show you sort of how it works. So I've got it cut, looks perfect, look at it. Just what I wanted, those. We go to the checkout now. I took my dad along, we went shopping as well, so we loaded it all up into the back of the car, got the plywood back to the house. Now I won't need all of these bits because some of these bits are destined for the other corner of the room. I, I'm gonna do some shelves for the TV area. That's gonna be on, a, on the next video. Just check with the spirit level. Spot on. It's but first I need to use these ones. These planks here that they very kindly cut up. I hope I've got the measurements right. I've not checked it yet. I thought I'd do it on camera and share, share the joy with you. But let me show you the basic idea. I'm gonna 
hopefully if I've got the measurements right, it should slot into there. So all I need to do is cut the right lengths. But let's, let's just slide it in just to see. Please work, please work. Oh, it's really tight. Oh, that's really snug. Is it gonna work? Oh, yeah. Does it go in? It does, look at that. <gasps> Great. So all I need to do now is to cut these to lengths and then figure out a way to secure them, screw them in somehow from behind. The, the wall isn't true, so that's not a true L shape, unfortunately. I think I'm gonna have some gaps. That gap there isn't my dodgy measurements. That is literally how the wall meets. It kind of comes out a bit. I managed to get four pieces cut from the board. I can only use one side because it's got this printing on it and that one's a bit scratched. I think I did that in the car. This one has a load of filler in it. This one looks okay and this one looks okay. Whoa, I'm going to use these two for the big parts, the long parts on the bench. It's the 1st of August, it's the middle of summer and it has just started raining so I'm going to try and get this done as quickly as possible. One of them I don't have to cut at all, I'm just going to run that the whole length. So if I can choose that one, I think I'm going to... <gasps> it's a hard choice. I think I'm going to keep this one so we'll get that out of the rain. Which means I need to make this one 79.2 centimetres long. I really do not want to mark these pieces of wood, so I'm laying out the dog blanket on our IKEA Siglaro table just to keep it scratch free. I know I should probably varnish it and uh, protect it. I'll probably do that later on, but let's just cut it to length now. I'm using my jigsaw and I'm trying to guide it as straight as possible, which is a bit tricky in the drizzle, but I'm sure I can get it through there. Casper's got his friend over. And now I'm going to cut this piece into smaller pieces. These will go onto the sides, onto the ends of the L-shaped bench to stop all my stuff falling out. I'm on a bit of a wing and a prayer with these measurements because I've got to keep the jigsaw straight. I'm hoping the chair would catch that. <laughs> Let's go and get these onto the bench. So, uh, I've put one loose on ready and I want this to go on the end here. Oh yes. Oh that is really satisfying. I think that looks really good. And then I'll push this one up a bit so that it's flush. There, like that. Completely flush. I just need to work out a way now to fix these to the bench so they don't fall off. <laughs> To permanently fix the sides onto the frames of the benches, I'm using these L-shaped metal brackets. And I can't help feeling like this isn't the best or the prettiest way of fixing them on. It is really difficult finding places to, to screw and I can't get my screwdriver into these tiny places. So I've got to find the right brackets and the right screwdrivers to try and get in here. So I've got a bit of a gap here, but it's a bit unavoidable. I think that's the closest I can get. And when the lids are on, let's put the lids on. There, finally, <laughs> got sides on and, and, oh, I could do this. Put it away and never see it again. <laughs> Today I'm going to be finishing off one job, I've got so many jobs to finish, but this is the L-shaped bench, this is an L-shaped bench day, and this is Vlogmas, so yeah we've got some nice snow happening in the background to make us feel all Vlogmasy. What I'm hoping to do today, it is 3 o'clock, I want to get this done by 5 o'clock, uh, we'll see how that goes, but we've got a few jobs to do on this to finish it off. So since we last saw the L-shaped bench on the video, we've had these made. My unstoppable, amazing wife built these. I, I took an Ikea mattress for my son's bed. That was from another video, the teen bed video. And I cut up, well I had to measure 
the mattress to size, which was really difficult because it's, it's squeezy and squashy, so you can't really get an accurate measurement on it. But I tried anyway and measured it out, and then here's some footage of me using a saw, I think. I used a saw to cut them up. This was in sunnier times, it seemed so long ago now. But I cut the two bits of mattress into these two seats so then the next difficult bit was to get some kind of cover onto them. And the way my amazing unstoppable wife managed to do that was to get our Ikea sewing machine, which was useless, it was brand new. And it just didn't, it just couldn't cope with this fabric at all. So it was a really long job to measure it up, cut it out, and then somehow sew the pieces together. It turns out, because we love this fabric, but it turns out that it's quite thick and the sewing machine couldn't cope. So we had to get these special like denim needles, the big ass needles that could cope better with the fabric. Anyway, managed to get them together and the, the pads look amazing. We followed some instructions on, um, there's some useful YouTube videos out there. I also want to fill these holes and somehow family proof it because already, look, all our heels. Oh, hello, Casper. Uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, our feet and heels and dust a mess and food are going all over them. So I want to find a way of protecting them. Oh, one more big job. I've got to somehow get power out because we've got two power points that are blocked in by the L-shaped bench. So I'm going to somehow bring power to the outside. Yeah, that's a two hour job, isn't it? This is absolutely disgusting. Have a look at this. So, ah, oh, I just left the board on loose at the back and it's warped, but because it's the coolest part of the room, look at it, it's just revolting. Look at the mold, I've got mold everywhere in this house. Ugh, look at it, just disgusting. So now I've got to clean the board. <laughs> I'm hoping if I varnish it, then we won't have this kind of a problem, but oh my good God, this is a toxic health hazard. I have put a face mask on now because the spores just go everywhere. And look at it, it's just covered in mold. I use this, Milton sterilizing fluid. You know the stuff that you use when the kids were, were babies? This stuff, I don't know if it's the right stuff for mold, but every time I've used this and I've cleaned a lot of mold from the house recently, it has not come back when I've used Milton sterilizing fluid on the patch of mold. So I'm now, oh my goodness, just getting it everywhere, but I'm just getting it on the cloth on the board trying to remove as much mold as possible without disturbing it too much and watching it go poof into the air the little black clouds of mold spores <laughs> this is death liquid to the mold if you know a better way of removing mold then please leave it in the comments below but this stuff has just been perfect for the mold that I've wanted to eradicate I've got a second board behind the other L-shaped bench. I don't think I can use this, it's just too small. But I better clean the mold off before I put it in the garage or something. And while the benches are out, I'm gonna take this opportunity to swap this really expensive power socket for this one, a white one. I'm hoping we'll be able to use the silver one on the outside later on. I'll just do this now, just that I've got it. The next thing that I'm going to do is put wood filler into these screw holes. I've got this stuff off Amazon and I'll just scrape it on. And if I do it now, hopefully it will dry before I put the varnish on. So here I am spreading it in and just using the, the trowel, the wallpaper scraper to keep it off, off the edge of the holes. I'm only doing it on the screw holes that you can see on the outside. I won't bother doing the ones behind because you know, I'm a craftsman. And now something I've wanted to do since the last video, I'm now using these really nice brackets that I got from Amazon. I'm just using them to make the panels on the side lie a bit more flush with the stud. It's really difficult getting the power tools in between the stud work to try and get them in, but they, these are much easier to do than the L-shape brackets that I was trying to do last time. So I think they're gonna look really good as well, even though you can't see them on the inside. 
This is a really dicey moment now. I'm trying to fit the power sockets onto the end of the shorter bench. And to do that, ah, oh, I, I took so long to fit these exactly. The first step is to measure out the power socket and to try to center it. And it's difficult to judge because I've got a lot of stuff at the back of the socket that needs to be accommodated by this hole. So the hole can't be too big, otherwise there'll be a gap and it'll fall through. And it can't be too small because it needs to be big enough to accommodate all the socketry at the back of the socket. So I'm taking it my best guess with my pencil, measuring it out. And now the scary, scary bit, I'm drilling holes in the edges of where I think the cutout's going to go. And once I've drilled these holes through, I've then got a space for the jigsaw blade to get in and I can now carve out this middle. This is too late now. This is either it or very much not it, but I'm gonna cut out this center section here and hope that the double power socket fits. It goes through and yes, it fits, it's a perfect fit. It looks like it can sit on there. I'll have a box behind it as well and hopefully that will grip and hold the power socket in place. It's time to sand down the, the filler now. It's not quite dry, but I'll just take off the big bumps and edges just to flatten it down a bit, get ready for the next step that's coming. And now what do you think? Uh, leave a comment below. I've got to coat these with something to protect it from our, you know, our boots just kicking up against it when we're sitting down there. Do I use protective oil or do I use wood varnish? Ah, I don't know why, I'd much prefer to oil these. I'm gonna have to go with the varnish because of the scuff marks. It just feels like this is more of a protective seal. I'm gonna varnish them and we'll just see how we'll go with that. This now is the job that I'm absolutely dreading. Yep, it's time to varnish and I have never varnished before in my life. I'm reading the instructions. I know I've got to do two to three coats and I've got to leave an hour between each coat. And I'm also painting with the grain rather than against the grain, even though it's plywood. It's really hard work because it's the benches are filthy and I've cleaned them as best as I can. I don't think it's good enough, so I keep picking up fluff, but I'm managing to, to get the varnish on without making too much of a state of it. I'm doing the obvious bits that you can see and the obvious bits that will get kicked by our shoes while we're sitting on the L-shaped bench. But I'm also now thinking, well, maybe I should be doing the backs because if I do the back of the bench, then it won't get wet and it won't get moldy so now I'm painting inside and I honestly thought I could do the whole bench with one tin and look I've used the whole lot <laughs> so I've put a second and third coat on the really obvious bits that you can see oh and I forgot I forgot to paint the the stuff that we sit on the two furniture panels that I cut to sit on which is the actual top part of the bench yeah I've got to do a good job with these because these benches take a bit of a pounding from our delicate behinds. Have a look at this. It's now 11 o'clock, now it's five to 11. <laughs> the whole family have gone to bed. I've been doing this for eight hours. Well, I had something to eat and I had to recharge the camera a couple of times, but I've been at this for <laughs> eight hours. But it's okay because I've got everything varnished. I've even managed to fit properly a nice box and a little extension lead for the power sockets. What I'm gonna do now, let's speed this up. I'm gonna reassemble the boxes, the two bench, is going to bring them together and I've also got to find a way of kind of bolting them together. I thought I could keep them loose but over time they just drift apart. They're like tectonic plates. They want to make their own way. <laughs> I think I've figured out a way to fix them together and I'm just going to loosely screw them together just so that they hold, hold tight and don't drift across the kitchen while we sit on them. I'm calling this Dad Delivers Success. <laughs> Let me leave you with some beauty shots. I'll try and shoot it from as many angles. But I think this is pretty much the end of the L-shaped bench project. I am really pleased with how these have turned out. It just looks really inviting. It's covered by the table, so you never get to see the work that went into this, <laughs> the hours. But I think we've, we've managed to make some storage and make a nice soft area for the corner of the room. I've no idea what we're gonna do about the mold. I think we're gonna to have to get some kind of dehumidifier for the kitchen or something. Anyway, if you've got any comments, 
<laughs> are you having a go at this please leave a comment and, and don't forget the previous two videos are down in the description if you got to this point thank you for being so awesome by hitting that thumbs up button or even the subscribe button and right here is what YouTube thinks you want to be watching next can you please help my daddy get 10,000 subscribers just click in his face thanks bye all right this is going to be the proper one mate